Did you know that the electricity running through your fan or laptop might have traveled hundreds of kilometers before reaching you, sometimes as AC, sometimes as DC? But have you ever paused to wonder, why do we even need both? Why not just stick with one? This question has fascinated engineers for decades and is exactly what we're going to explore today. The comparison between DC and AC transmission. Let's begin with DC transmission. In recent years, high voltage DC has emerged as a serious player in long distance and bulk power transmission. One of the biggest reasons is its efficiency. HVDC systems simply perform better over long distances. Unlike AC, where power tends to oscillate back and forth, DC flows steadily in one direction. This might sound simple, but it's a game changer in electrical engineering. For example, in HVDC systems, we don't need three conductors like AC transmission. Just two conductors do the job. That's less metal, lower weight, and ultimately less cost. Also, because DC doesn't involve inductance, capacitance, or phase displacement, we can avoid problems like voltage surges or reactive power losses. The absence of inductance also means less voltage drop over long distances, which improves the overall voltage regulation of the system. Another major benefit, there's no skin effect in DC. In AC systems, current tends to concentrate on the outer surface of the conductor, wasting the inner portion. But in DC, the entire cross-section of the conductor is utilized, maximizing efficiency. And let's not forget insulation. In DC systems, the potential stress on insulation is lower for the same voltage level, so the insulation can be thinner and cheaper. DC also experiences less corona loss and reduced electromagnetic interference, especially helpful when laying underground or submarine cables. Perhaps most importantly, DC systems are immune to the stability and synchronization problems that often affect large AC networks. That makes HVDC perfect for linking different grids or transporting power from remote renewable sources. But of course, direct current isn't flawless. The first major hurdle is generation and transformation. You can't directly generate direct current at high voltage like alternating current. You need converters. Modern high voltage direct current systems use thyristor based line commutated converters or more advanced voltage source converters using IGBTs. These devices have significantly improved over time, but they're still expensive and technologically complex. DC circuit breakers are another challenge. While we now have fast mechanical and hybrid DC breakers, they're not as mature or cost effective as their AC counterparts. So yes, while HVDC is great for long distance transmission, it comes with conversion and protection complexities. Now let's talk about alternating current transmission, the system we're most familiar with. The biggest advantage? Ease of generation and transformation. We can generate AC directly at high voltages, and thanks to simple transformers, we can step the voltage up or down efficiently. This makes AC ideal for everything from high voltage transmission to low voltage domestic supply. AC substations are easy to maintain and are cost effective. And the infrastructure is already built, making expansion or upgrades more straightforward. That's why most power is still transmitted and distributed in AC form today. But AC isn't without its flaws. First, it needs more copper. A three-phase AC system requires three conductors compared to just two in DC. Second, AC lines are more complex to construct due to challenges like reactive power, voltage regulation, and synchronization. And there's the skin effect, where current crowds near the conductor surface, increasing resistance and losses. Also, line capacitance causes charging currents even when the line is not delivering power, leading to energy waste. So what's the bottom line? AC remains the standard for generation and distribution, but DC, especially HVDC, is fast becoming the standard for long-distance bulk power transmission. Technologies like modular multi-level converters or MMC, self-commutated VSCs, and digital control systems are revolutionizing power transmission. HVDC is now preferred for underwater and underground cables, interconnecting asynchronous power grids, and connecting remote renewable energy plants like offshore wind farms. Countries like India, China, and many in Europe are rapidly expanding their HVDC systems. Let me ask you this. Do you think HVDC will completely replace AC for transmission in the next few decades? Or will AC and DC continue to coexist? Tell me in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts. If you found this video helpful or interesting, 
make sure to smash the like button. That small click really helps us reach more learners like you. Also, if this topic made you think of someone who might benefit from it, share this video with them. It might just help them in their next exam, interview or project. And hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Electrology, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any power-packed explanation. Want to support the channel directly? You can click on the thanks button below the video. It's a small way to show big support. And for those of you who want even more, exclusive study materials, notes, or early access to videos, join the Electrology membership by clicking the join button. Your support means the world and helps us create even better ad-free content for everyone. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Electrology, where electricity meets clarity.